الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإنا وكتاب العقيدة الواسطية للشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمي رحمه الله للشيخ رحمه الله هي سد وقد دخل في هذه الجملة ما وصف الله به نفسه في سورة الإخلاص التي تعدل ثلث القرآن حيث يقول قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية in this part he is talking about الاستدلال على إثبات أسماء الله وصفاته من القرآن الكريم how to um, establish it's how to establish and uses evidence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes from the Quran and the Shaykh rahimahullah he is teaching us here that we have to combine between affirmation and negation when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's characteristics we have to do a nafi negation and an ithbad so he says وَقَدْ دَخَلَ فِي هَذِهِ الْجُمْلَةِ مَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ Now, وَقَدْ دَخَلَ فِي هَذِهِ الْجُمْلَةِ is talking about what we previously spoke about in our previous class. And that was when he was saying وَهُوَ سُبْحَانَهُ قَدْ جَمَعَ فِي مَا وَصَفَ وَسَمَّ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ بَيْنَ النَّفِي وَالْإِثْبَاتِ He's referring to that sentence which we took last Last lesson, وَهُوَ سُبْحَانَهُ Allah is one who has combined between when describing himself and when he gave himself a name between negation and affirmation. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he intended فَأَرَادَ هُنَا أَنْ يُورِدَ مَا يَدُلُّ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابُ السُنَّةِ In this chapter, what he wants to prove and he wants to bring to light is that which he has affirmed, evidences from the kitab, and evidences from the sunnah he wants to bring. So he started with what? Surah Al-Ikhlas. The reason he started with Surah Al-Ikhlas is لِفَضْلِهَا the virtue that Surah Al-Ikhlas holds. وَسُمِّيَتْ بِذَلِكَ And Surah Al-Ikhlas was called Surah Al-Ikhlas because لِأَنَّهَا أَخْلَصَتْ فِي صِفَاتِ اللَّهِ وَلِأَنَّهَا تُخَلِّصُ قَارِئِهَا مِنَ الشِّرْكِ the reason why Surah Al-Ikhlas is, is called Al-Ikhlas is because it purifies for Allah His names. And it also purifies from the one who is reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas any form of shirk. It purifies him from it. The Shaykh went on to saying, التي تعدل ثلث القرآن And Surah Al-Ikhlas is equal to one third of the Quran. ثلث القرآن one third of the Quran is equal to one third تعدل it means to ساويه it is equal and it is level to one third of the Quran or it's equal to one third of the Quran وذلك لأن المعاني القرآن ثلاثة أنواع what does that mean that it's equal to the Quran uh, one, it's with one third of the Quran if you look at the Quran of Allah it is categorized into three the Quran it is categorized into three. Tawheed, Qasas, and Ahkam. If you look at the Quran, you will realize that it's Tawheed. Singling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. Singling Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in his lordship. Singling Allah in his name and his attributes. You see, the first one. The second one is Qasas, stories that the Quran tells us. And the third one is ahkam rulings that the Quran gives. So Surah Al-Ikhlas is a Tawheed. It's one third is a Tawheed. It's, so it's one third of the Quran because one third of the Quran talks about Tawheed. Surah Al-Ikhlas, it has in it the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has in it. Because it says to you, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say who Allah Allah is ahad one Allah is one Allah samad and then samad is characteristics samad means what the one who's amakamula su'dadu the one who is complete in his mastery he's complete he's a complete master it's characteristics of his subhanahu wa ta'ala imam al-bukhari imam al-bukhari in his kitab al-fadail al-quran he chapter a bab where he called it babu fadl qul huwa allah ahad the virtues of qul huwa allah ahad and then he brought on the chain of narration of abi sa'id al-khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, sorry anna rajulan sami'a rajulan yaqra a man had another man recite qul huwa allah ahad there was a man who had another man read qul huwa allah ahad yurdiduha he kept repeating qul huwa allah ahad فلما أصبح جاء إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فذكر له ذلك وكأن الرجل يتقالها. In the morning, the man who saw the other man recite قل والله أحد and repeating it, he came to the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said يا رسول الله I saw a man recite قل والله أحد and he kept repeating it. And it was as though that the man who was asking the prophet was kind of belittling قل والله أحد. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ The Messenger said وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي I swear by the Lord in which my, my soul is in his hand إِنَّهَا لَتَعْدِلُ ثُلُثَ الْقُرْآنِ That it's equal that it's equal to one third of the Qur'an الإمام ابن القيم إمام ابن القيم um, There's a book of his that the scholars combined and they brought together from his commentaries of ayat and they brought it from his books and they made it into a tafsir of his and they called it Bada'u Tafsir Ibn al-Qayyim and Dar ibn al-Jawzi published it Dar ibn al-Jawzi published it if you go to the fifth volume page 368 368 Ibn al-Qayyim says regarding Qul Allah Ahad He says Wal ahadithu bikawniha ta'dilu thuluth al-Qur'ani takadu tablughu mablagh al-tawaturi The narrations that have come that inform us that Surah al-Ikhlas is equal to one third of the Qur'an is close to reaching multitude narration It's close to reaching multitude narration, narration. Now we go. The Sheikh then says, "Haythu yaqul, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Jalla shanu, qul, say. Who is this qul? This fi'l amr referring to? Is referring to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ya Muhammad, oh Muhammad, say. And this, brothers, is an evidence to show you that the Quran is the speech of Allah and not the Prophet's wordings. Because somebody's talking to him. Qul is enough to show you." That this Quran is something which he's being commanded. في هذا دليل is evidence in this. على أن القرآن كلام الله that is the speech of Allah. إذ لو كان كلام محمد أو غيره لم يقل. قل. If the Quran was other than the speech of the mess, if it was other than if it was not the speech of Allah, sorry, and it was the speech of the Prophet. Then he would not have said, the Prophet would not have said, Qul. Then Allah says, Allahu Ahad, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Ahad means a wahidun one. La nadira lahu. There is no one like him. Wala wazira, wala mathila, wala sharika. Allahu samad. A samad is a sayyid, a master. Alladhi kamula fi su'dadihi wa sharafihi. One who is complete in his, 
him being a master, he's complete in that. He's complete in his honor. He's complete in his, him being a uh, uh, high and uh, noble, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in all of his characteristics. في جميع صفاته in all of, all of his characteristics. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> also, Samad means وَالَّذِي تَصْمُدُ إِلَيْهِ الْخَلَائِقُ وَتَقْصِدُهُ فِي جَمِيعَ حَاجَاتِهَا وَمُهِمَّاتِهَا That every single creation it intends from him. They want things from him. They rely on him. They're in need of him. He's Samad. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. لم يلد ولم يولد لم يلد means what? أي ليس له ولد Allah does not have a child ولم يولد so this is a refutation on what? في الرد على النصارى ومشركي العرب الذين نسبوا لله الولد this is a refutation on the Christians who attributed to Allah that he has a child. And also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he was not, he has no parent. He has no parents. No one gave birth to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no children, and he has no parents. Azza wa Jalla. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that it? لا. وَلَيْسَ لَهُ كُفْوَ الْأَحَدِ And no one is equal to him. So pay attention to this. He has no one above him who are his parents. He has no one below him which are his children, his offspring. He doesn't have that subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he also doesn't have anyone equal to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوَ الْأَحَدِ أَيْ لَيْسَ لَهُ مُكَافِئٌ وَلَا مُمَاثِلٌ وَلَا نَذِيرٌ He doesn't have his subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person study Surah Al-Ikhlas properly and he understands the tafsir in it and the understanding and the concept in it that is enough for you to give a good form of da'wah and to explain the concept of what? at tawheed but the person studies it properly but a person who's calling Christians and has never studied at uh, ikhlas or doesn't understand Surah Al-Ikhlas you see or doesn't understand what the verse or the surah is talking about then really it's a problem for him. This surah, this surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas, it contains things that we need to take from it, benefits that we can extract from it. The benefit that we can take from it is what the Shaykh was trying to use it for in this chapter, which is what? Annaha tadammanit. This surah consists of, and it has combined and it has brought together, bayn al nafi wal ithbati, negation and affirmation. The surah, it brought together and it consists in it negation and affirmation. Where is it? Allahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. What are they? What, what are they? they are affirmation. That's called Isbatun. And there's negation as well. Lam Yalid. Walam Yulad. Walam Yakullahu Kufuwan Ahad, which is Nafi. Now, this is a qa'ida important in Babu al-Asma'i wa sifat in which Ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah are built on or their belief of Allah's names and attributes they, they, they build their, their, uh, their foundation on this which is the negation and the affirmation for them is something you need to come with when it comes to Allah's names and attributes. What do the innovators do? The innovators, they come with negation, with that affirmation. And they think that is praiseworthy. They think that is what? They think that is what? Praiseworthy. But that isn't the case. The praiseworthy is in the affirmation, not in the negation. So if a negation comes, then it is praiseworthy when there is what? Affirmation there. For instance, Stripping from a person oppression and saying Fulan does not oppress is not praiseworthy. To say Fulan does not oppress is not necessarily praiseworthy. Why? Because the person cannot oppress maybe because he's weak. He 
doesn't have the ability to. And so automatically, that isn't praiseworthy because you're what? You're weak. You're what? You're, you're weak. But if I say, you don't oppress and you're just. Ha. Ah. This shows Qudra ability. Are you with me? It's important. Then the Sheikh goes on to saying, go, the Sheikh goes on to saying, وَمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ فِي أَعْظَمِ آيَةٍ فِي كِتَابِهِ Also, and that which Allah has described Himself in the greatest verse in the Quran. Again, he's trying to use that same principle which is Al-Ithbat wa nafyu is an ayat al-Kursi as well. The greatest ayah in the book of Allah. Haythu yaqulu as Allah says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm, lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard, man dha al-lazhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-idhni, ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum, وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ وَلِهَذَا كَانَ مَنْ قَرَأَ هَذِي الْآيَةَ فِي لَيْلَةٍ لَمْ يَزَلْ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَافِظًا وَلَا يَقْرَبُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ حَتَّى يُصْبِحَ the Shaykh he says, وَمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ فِي أَعْظَمِ آيَةٍ فِي كِتَابِهِ And that which Allah has described Himself in the greatest, in the greatest verse in the book. How has He described Himself? وَمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ As Allah described, as what? Affirmation and negation like He previously mentioned in His previous sentences. فِي أَعْظَمِ آيَةٍ In the greatest ayah. What does ayah mean? Ayah في اللغة, in the Arabic language it means العلامة sign. But here it means but والمراد بها هنا. Here the meaning is طائفة من كلمات القرآني متميزة عن غيرها بفاصلة. It is a group. Here it means a group of Words from the Quran, a group of words from the Quran that are distinguished between one another by a fasila. A fasila is when every verse finishes the, the ending of the ayah, of ayah, the verse, the thing that says ayah one, ayah two is called a fasila. It distinguishes one verse to the other. So it's a group of words that came together that were distinguished between one another by a period or a, a fasila put there. Okay? This is called an ayah here. That's what's meant here. This ayah which the shaykh brought here is referred to as ayatul kursi. Allah la ilaha illallah is known as ayatul kursi. That's what it's known as. Why? Because it mentions the kursi in it. Because it mentions, where is the evidence that this ayah is the, the greatest ayah in the Quran? Where's the evidence for that? Hey, does anyone know where it's narrated? Huh? Nah, where? In where? Where is the hadith? Bukhari. Hey. The hadith is narrated in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Ubay ibn Ka'bid radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He, anna Rasulallah, anna Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet came to Ubay and the Prophet said to Ubay, ayyu ayatin fi kitabillahi a'zamu, which ayah in the book of Allah is the greatest? Qala Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lamu, Allah and his messenger, they know best. فَرَدَّدَهَا مِرَارًا The Prophet repeated it many times. 
ثم قال أبي after that the prophet said أبي آية الكرسي آية الكرسي فقال النبي then the prophet said to him so sorry أبي said أبي said أبي said آية الكرسي the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him ليهنك العلم يا أبا المنذر knowledge May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow the knowledge that you have and nurture you with more. Ya Abel Mundir. Why is this surah ayah the greatest ayah in the Quran? Because it consists of affirming Allah's names, Allah's characteristics, and also negating from Allah that which is not befitting for him. To negate from him that which is not befitting for him. Now let's go into it. فَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى Allah's statement where he says اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ What does that mean? It means لا معبود بحق إلا الله وما سواه فعبادته من أبطل الباطل. That's what it means. It means there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and everything that is worshipped besides Allah, it is باطل. It is باطل. الله لا إله إلا هو. الحي. الحي means what? الحي means الدائم الباقي الذي له كمال الحياة والذي لا سبيل للفناء إليه الحي means what? The forever living one His, The word حي here means الدائم دائم is forever الباقي remaining He will forever remain سبحانه وتعالى He is complete in life Life of Allah is complete سبحانه وتعالى and there is no way it will come to an end. وَالَّذِي لَا سَبِيلَ لِلْفَنَاءِ إِلَيْهِ Allah's life, there is no way it will come to an end. الْقَيُّومُ الْقَيُّومُ means what? قَيُّومُ means the one that stands for himself and he stands for others. الْقَائِمُ بِنَفْسِهِ الْمُقِيمُ لِغَيْرِهِ so Allah doesn't need anyone. That, that means He doesn't need his khalq. But they are what? وَخَلْقُ مُحْتَاجُونَ إِلَيْهِ But they are in need of him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And brothers, the word الحيو and القيوم is اسم الأعظم. It is اسم الأعظم as Abu Dawood narrated in his sunan in the Tirmidhi and Ahmed that Asma bint Yazid radiyallahu ta'ala anha her hadith which is Hassan al-Sheikh al-Albani authenticated it. That it is the name if Allah is asked with it إذا دعي به أجاب If Allah is asked on that name الحي القيوم Allah obeys. He obeys the caller of the call the one that's calling. وإذا سئل به أعطى and the one who asks is given what he wants. Now الحي and القيوم are two names which all of Allah's names all of Allah's names they come back to these two and his characteristics they come back to this they are two names in which all Allah's characteristics come back to you know why? one الحي is صفة ذاتية and القيوم is صفة فعلية and all the names of Allah are what? Sifa Dhatiya and Sifa Fi'liya. What does Sifa Dhatiya mean? And what does Sifa Fi'liya mean? Sifa Dhatiya are characteristics that never detach itself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are always connected to Him. Are you with me? They are always connected to Him. And Sifa fi'liya are what? They are characteristics that are connected to Allah's will. 
Meaning he does it whatever he wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's connected to his will. So all of Allah's names, they come back to these two. Why? Because the one who wants to have all of the other characteristics, these two characteristics have to be in place in order for him to have the others. He has to be hay, and has to be qayyum. So al-khalq, wal-rizq, wal-tadbir, wal all of those won't happen if it's not hay'an. Al-rahma won't happen if it's not al-hayyu. Then all of Allah's name, uh, characteristics, they come back to these two names of His. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala it does not take him سنة. سنة is a nuas, and it's نوم خفيف. It's also known as the مقدمة of sleeping. It's just before the person is about to sleep, the مقدمة, the introduction. When your eyes just start closing, you start to go like this. And the person just goes like this. This is called what? It's called nu'as. Allah, that doesn't happen to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sinatun. Sina is a nu'as. It's a very light sleeping. The nu- sina, are you with me? The sina, I mean the nu'as, it happens to the eyes only. That's the difference between nom and sina. The sina... It happens to the eyes, but the mind, the person can still hear what you're saying. Are you with me? Sleeping, on the other hand, is the heart is gone. The person is gone. You see, it's the eyes and the, it's another level. Are you with me? <coughs> None of those happen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sleeping is the brother of death. Or akhul mut. Are you with me? Sleeping is what? It is the brother of... It is the brother of death. Before I move on, I wanted to say something that Ibn al-Qayyim, in his book, Madarij al-Salikin, he said something. And this is a, this is a very... A good benefit for you, Talabat al-Ilm, students of knowledge. Ibn al-Qayyim said to me, he said, Ibn al-Qayyim said, that Ibn Taymiyyah said to me, Ibn al-Qayyim said, Ibn al-Qayyim said that Ibn Taymiyyah said to me one day, these two names of Allah, al-Hay and al-Qayyum, al-Hay and al-Qayyum. Ibn Taymiyyah said to Ibn al-Qayyim, they have a great effect on the heart of the person. تَأْثِيرٌ عَظِيمٌ فِي حَيَاتِ الْقَلْبِ That الحي and القيوم, both of them, they have a, a very powerful effect on the heart of a person.